All right, I was talking to somebody. I was talking to somebody on the uh, about this generator, and they asked me to make a quick video of how I hooked it up. But anyway, here we go. There's a brand new uh, Harbor Freight Predator 8750. It's 87 peak watts, 8750 uh, peak watts, and 7,000 running watts. Now uh, we got probably. Um, 12 hours on it, did the break in, run it for five minutes, shut it off, checked everything, run it for 20 minutes, shut it off, checked everything, and then ran it for about three or four hours, and then ran it for another eight or 10 hours. But uh, right there, that plug that's plugged in is that NEMA, ooh, don't get me to lie, L something, I've forgotten. I don't use them that much. Uh, it's designed for 110 or 220. Let me go ahead. I've forgotten the numbers on it. You can look at the Harbor Freight manual. But anyway, there it is right there. It's the four pole. One of the poles has a little crook on it. Let's see if I can get my light and my... I'm using a headlight. Yeah, you can see the one with a crook on it. That one goes in on that side right there. Whoops, long call. But anyway, all right, so... People wanted to uh, know about how to hook it up. This is the simplest way to hook one up, very cost effective. All you need is that plug in right there. Make you an extension cord. Uh, don't make the extension cord too long. If you do, you need to look up those charts that says how many feet, uh, whatever amps on what size cord. I've got a uh, eight uh, AWG eight size cable, and I have welding machines and all that. So I mean. This, this extension cable here is probably about uh, 12, 15 foot long at the most. I've got a lot, my, all of my welders have this plug. That's the uh, three spade, or uh, flat connectors in one round. And so, uh, obviously this is plugged into the welder down there and this is the other end. So you'd be a damn fool to crank the generator up with that in your hand right I mean let's use common horse sense so you guys are safety police if you can't follow some simple common sense instructions you ain't got no business doing this all right this is for people that kind of have a clue what they're doing so this is a real simple way of doing this uh, that's one of my leads that actually goes to my air compressor but I've got several uh, 220s out in my shop that I run extension cords to so anyway let me give you a quick once over Here's a breaker panel. I got the uh, panel pulled off right there. Now, power's out, right? That's why you hook it up the generator? Thank you. So, uh, right now, there is no power. Of course, we're just saying that because the power's out. First thing you do is come over here. That's your main breaker up there. That's the power that comes in from outside. There's your two hots coming in, the two big black wires here and here and there's a ground wire over there that's coming in from the street first thing you do is flip your main breaker off all right you can see it says on right now the other side will say off and on that panel right there it'll say off should anyway all right so once you've done that you've isolated yourself from the power grid that way whenever you plug your generator in and you turn it on you're not frying the local uh, telephone guy or power guy down the street trying to fix it and he checked the, checked the line a minute ago and it was not hot and then you're going to throw a generator on right in the middle of him reaching back up there with his second set of tools okay so use common horse sense first thing you do is turn main power off alright now just for shits and grins here's another one of those plugs exactly like I showed you a second ago that's a female receptacle alright follow it up here it comes in the box comes right down here and goes into that 220 breaker right there. So the red and the black are hot. And then the other wire coming off of there is a white and then there's a bear. White and bear, that's your two neutrals. Actually a bear is a frame ground. White is a neutral, they both go the same bar. Call them whatever you want, okay? If you're an electrician, you call it ground and, and neutral. So right here, what the deal is here is you got two, two hots coming in from the main outside. One of them powers one bar, the other one powers, powers the other. So on one side of your breaker panel over here, all of your 110 volts single throw switches 
run off of that side the box. Okay, same thing on this side. They run off, all these little guys here run off one side the box. When you have a 220, that leg coming down, these two legs come down, one of them is on that side and then just offset from that goes the other side. So whenever you plug in a 220 breaker, right, then it's feeding off of one 220 on one side and one 220 on the other, those bars in the back. That's why this works, okay? So here we're gonna plug in our generator. That's the one coming out here to this plug. You plug in the generator and it's going to that breaker right there. So it's feeding both sides of the bus with 110 volts. Each one of them 110, both together with a ground and a neutral gives you 220. So you leave that off, right? Now you plug in on both ends, you plug your generator in and your plug in, your main breaker's off, and your regular breaker that you got you hooked up to your generator's off. You go over and crank generator up. Then you come back over here, and now you throw power to your panel. That main breaker's off. It's not going to the street. Then that's the way you run it. Now, if you got a bunch of big 220 breakers, like running air compressors and all that kind of stuff, you'll want to turn them off, and you can turn off all the big stuff, throw your generator in, and then slowly start adding everything else and if you start adding stuff and uh, and, and, and the generator won't handle it you find out what that is and go inside and turn it off okay so that that's the way you do that and you should do that ahead of time by the way find out what all your big electrical consumers are now that's the 8750 and 7000 watt harbor freight uh, predator generator that's their big one. There's two different model numbers, 83, 650, I think, and 51 or something like that. Let's see, 83086 and 83085. I don't know what the damn difference is. I think it's just one of them's a little newer than the other. Anyway, we got the 86 model. So, oops, got a low battery one. Let me hurry up. Now I'm gonna take it back here because I just got through testing my new or this new one that goes to my mom with my old northern uh, tools generator northern tools generator and this generator in my opinion are exactly the same as far as power here it is it's just running it's not plugged in anything in but there's my other welding connection back there and that's how now look this has really got a really nice feature on it with well, this auto throttle right here i really like that it doesn't harbor freight doesn't have it but this thing will go to an idle while you're not using it's good for a construction site but uh there's the plug-in same four wire plug-in right there so the generators are but um you know I'm impressed with the Harbor Freight. I think they're probably pretty close to the exact same units anyway. But I just got through load testing because I've had this generator for, geez, I can't remember. Six, seven years, maybe? Longer, maybe? I don't remember. Anyway, it's always been a good generator. I hadn't had any problems with it. But this one's going to mom, and I think I'm going to go ahead and buy me one and replace the old generator. Even though I hadn't had any tr trouble with it, but somebody wants it. That's yeah, the way it goes. Yeah, so, sale, right? yeah, I'm going to sell that Northern Tools. All right, but let me tell you guys simple, one more time. Generators off. Right? The safest thing to do is turn the main breaker off. Then hook up the generator plug here, hook up the generator plug wherever you're going to plug your generator in. Then crank your generator up and then start adding breakers. Flip your, you know, start adding breakers as you go. In other words, flip on the breaker that you got your generator connected to and slowly start adding breakers. 
Because when you first turn it on, all your stuff wants to come on immediately all at once. That's the worst load that it's going to have, right? Because your startup voltage, that's why you have starting capacitors, run capacitors and all that. So you're starting, everything's starting and needs all that extra electricity. So if you start, you know, start all your 110 volt stuff, leave all that on, go ahead and flip the breaker. Everything should be fine. Then start adding whatever back. But you can't run a whole lot of 220 stuff anyway. So, but just add stuff, add stuff, add stuff, and you get your, uh, that's the easiest way to, you know, put a load on your generator. So, there you go, folks. That's the way it works. Oh, uh, my, uh, Harbor Freight Predator 8750. Mom's, anyway. She got it for her first. Uh, I'd say thumbs up. Cheers.